It's the middle of summer and things are really starting to heat up. The dog days are bringing in more tours, more bones, new guides, and a few new sites to explore. The teeth and the bones are piling up, but so too is the fatigue and the frustration. The family has to return back to Florida, but the digging has to proceed on schedule. Will the heat bring us the big one, or will we just crash? and burn. Find out next on this week's episode of Paleo Adventures. I'm Walter Stein. I've been digging dinosaurs now for over 20 years. I've worked on skeletons from Texas to Turkey. The specimens I've found, excavated, or prepared are in museums all over the world. I even have a dinosaur named that. This, this is my family. My wife Heather, who's always got my back. My two crazy kids who always keep me on my toes. And this is my crew. Jason, Becca, David, Dan, and a whole other cast of crazy people. You might even see a dog in here somewhere. This is our company, Paleo Adventures, and there's bones in them there hills. The summer of 2017 wore on and on and on. We were packed with tour groups, and even though we were finding all kinds of awesome fossils, the field was starting to wear on me a bit. These old bones, and in this case I'm referring to my own, were starting to show signs of wear and tear. By late July, it was time to call in some reinforcements. Hey, we're here. He's not a hugger, is he? I'm not much of a hugger. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Why am I being videoed? I didn't shave. No, perfect. I'm not clean. I Does this matter? Bad. Oh, can, so you can smell you? You're supposed to pass out right about there. A <laughs> apparently, video is now smell a vision. So, they, do you, make they it can't smell you. They can't smell you. Don't be, be nice to that poor little wasp. <laughs> that little wasp ever do to you? Just don't want to getting anywhere near me. David runs a company called T-Rex Explorers out of Illinois. He and his wife do educational programs for schools and clubs, encouraging students to pursue careers in science. David and his family have been coming out and digging with us for the last seven seasons. This year, he's going to be one of my assistant guides. David, say hi to the folks. Hi folks. you got to join us at Paleo Adventures. We're having a blast. you got to get out here and, and dig with us. He's a walking advertisement. Yes, sir. Dan had to return back to California for a little while. So, this week, David's going to take over the Tooth Draw West site. As we saw last week, the Tooth Draw West site is simply an extension of the Tooth Draw River Channel deposit. It's essentially the same stuff. It's just about 150 meters away. 
but because of its location, that little tight corner, and tucked down way into the Badlands, it does tend to get pretty hot in that little corner. So David's going to have his work cut out for him this year. This week, I'm going to have a little help, too, on the tooth draw side. Uh, see, we have Cade, Christian. These are some future paleontologists uh, from Kansas City. Pretty serious, yep. Yeah, I met him when he was 10. Okay. Long time. Was it 10? 11. Somewhere in there. Yeah. We're putting him to work now. He's, he's going to be working today. Let's see. Here's our other guests out here. Let's see. We have another future paleontologist. What do you have to say to the folks at home? Uh, it's a pretty great opportunity, and you definitely take it. It's, My goodness. It's, it's a lot different than you would actually think it is being just like looking in a rock, but you actually get to dig, and there's a lot of stuff in this really fun. Yeah, Gary, this is like a walking advertisement here. This is awesome. Yeah, good. Cool. And let's see. We got some rookies here today. We got some rookies here today. Let's see. Who's this? Introduce yourself. Noah, he's a future uh, basketball soccer star. Yeah? Working for the Crystal Palace soccer team? Maybe. He's a little shy, yeah. I see Marty. Hi. Say hey, Marty. And Maya. Maya, Miss Maya, how are you doing? All right. Oh, and this is Dan. We hey. almost missed Dan. Hi, Dan. How are you? Dan's good. Dan's another veteran. And uh, that's Kay's dad. And we're, we're all going to be working at Tooth Draw today. It's going to be a little hot, but it's going to be fun. And hopefully we're going to find lots of really cool stuff. neck vertebrae. This was found by one of our guests yesterday, or uh, last week rather, found by one of our guests last week, and uh, they didn't have time to get it out. Uh, so yesterday I finished it and, and started to pedestal it. The pedestal isn't quite finished. I want to, I don't want to take too much underneath of it yet. Uh, All right, Mr. Christian, you got something you're chasing? Yeah, right here. Very nice. So, okay. I don't know if you were saying that it could be possibly attached, but I don't know. Well, no, it's not attached. Definitely not attached. You've got this one going in, which is a, mm -hmm. a turtle or crocodile limb bone. That one's going to have to get pulled out at some point today. But don't undercut too yeah. much, because then you undercut that. Yeah, I'm right? not going to work too far in. Okay. You might want to work on that one first. You want me to? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You good? All right, so you and I are doing some overburden over here, huh, Dan? You got it. I was just messing okay. around here and tell me. That's fine. You can see the different layers. And this little zone here, yeah. uh, this is the B, the mid B. This little thing is uh, kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. We're at like a little sandbar in here where this bottom edge kind of has been rising upwards and this one has been kind of coming down. Okay. Uh, a lot of the bones tend to be right under that fine clay and sand right there. Okay. Finally laminate and clean stuff. Is, you're going to find stuff right in here too, aren't you? The more gravel, a uh, good rule of thumb is the more gravel, the greater the chance you're finding bones. That B sand doesn't have a whole lot. So this little section here, which is pinched almost to nothing, look over where, where I'm working. Yep. It's yep. very thick. It's a thick yep. foot and a half, and it pinches almost to nothing. I'll come by and help you do yep. clear over burden a bit. Okay, now the guys over here, Andrew, Mr. Andrew has found something that looks very interesting. I don't know what it is yet. Um, I thought I saw a tooth coming out of the one right there where he's pointing at. Hard to see it. Um, but that might be a thesaur bone, a jaw fragment, or thesaurus jaw. I'm not 100% convinced of that yet. These guys over here are brave in the sun. Mr. Noah is working on what appear to be a croc jaw of some sort, maybe a dentary maxilla, I'm not sure yet. It has the texture of a crocodile. Still only seeing just a little bit of it sticking out, so I'm not sure yet. All right, and let's see, what have you got there? Okay, so you're down right into some mudstone. I think you're probably too low there. 
Yeah, I think, yeah. So you're going to have to probably find another spot here pretty soon. This is this wall's getting too vertical over here. What you got? Oh, well, hello. That is a fragment. Looks like a uh, part of the serrated edge of a Tyrannosaur tooth. So that's a little fragment of a Tyrannosaur tooth. That, I can keep that one. If it was complete, I would steal it. <laughs> <laughs> In a heartbeat, we would steal it. But because it's a fragment, because it's a fragment, yeah, you can keep that. T-Rex tooth frag. Now, while it was on the surface? Yeah. I, well, you know, I was brushing and I found it in my file. So okay. I look now for more. Okay, flip it up now. That, that's been out in the weather for oh, a long okay. time. See how... Yeah. yeah, that's been okay. bleached by the sun. That's a little tiny fragment. You can keep that. And it's well tumbled. It does not look like it came off anything complete. Alright, congratulations. And this Maya? Maya's got something? Oh, okay. Alright, I see a little little speck of something in there. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Alright, David will be right working next to you to help you out. Alright. Alright, it's late afternoon, it's ridiculously hot, it's probably in the hundreds, and we have a little Triceratops tooth, Joanna just found, how we doing Maya, Miss Maya, you okay over here? You're not supposed to say it's a bob, you're supposed to say that is a giant T-Rex tooth. And Tom Aber just missed it. It's a giant T-Rex tooth that Tom Aber just missed. So there you go. Nice. I appreciate that, Tom. Anyway, well, it's hot. It's definitely hot. Nano Tyrannus. Oh, Nano Tyrannus. Yes, I wanted to. I wanted to go. Not a Tyrannodon. No, no. This one's a. A nice little nanotyrannus tooth. I shouldn't say little, little. This is actually pretty, pretty, pretty big for a nanotyrannus. Um, nice narrow tooth, laterally compressed, and I would bet you I need a microscope to be certain, but I would bet you we got about four millimeters or four serrations per millimeter on both the anterior and the posterior carina. Nanotyrannus, or the pygmy tyrant, as we like to call it, is one of the most controversial dinosaurs in the Hill Creek and the Lance. In fact, many paleontologists argue that Nanotyrannus doesn't even exist. The history of Nanotyrannus is long and complicated, but it basically boils down to three names. Cleveland, Jane, and Bloody Mary. In 1942, a team of scientists from the Cleveland Museum of Natural History made an awesome discovery in Carter County, Montana. This was the skull of a tyrannosaur. This specimen was very unique and looked very different than the Tyrannosaurus rex skeletons that had been found earlier in the century. And for scientists back in 1946, they thought it was a different genus and species more closely related to Gorgosaurus than Tyrannosaurus. This specimen had unusual proportions that were different than Tyrannosaurus rex. It had a narrower snout, a longer skull. There were major significant differences to the quadratojugal, a bone in the back of the skull. There were differences in the lacrimal, a bone right before the eye. Differences in the, in the brain case, in the back of the skull, and major significant differences in the maxilla, the upper jaw, 
and the dentary, the lower jaw. Even more significantly, it had serious differences in the teeth. All of these differences added up. And in 1946, Gilmore decided that it was going to be a separate species from Gorgosaurus. He called it Gorgosaurus lancensis. Then, in 1988, three paleontologists came along by the name of Robert Bacher, Michael Williams, and Philip Curry. They took a look at the Cleveland skull and thought that the changes and the variations that they could see in that skull were so dramatic that they thought it elevated it to a genus level change, not just a species change, but a genus level change. They called this new genus Nanotyrannus, and they kept the same species named Lancensis. The name Nanotyrannus Lancensis means the tiny tyrant, and in their opinion, it clearly was. Here. Right? I see you eyeballing that bone. Stay at that bone. What? Oh, you're looking at the tooth. Stay away from that tooth. What's the matter with you? Get out of here. Get out of here. Man, you're to fight to off these teeth. Other scientists disagreed. One by the name of Thomas Carr suggested that the Cleveland skull wasn't a brand new genus and species. It was simply a juvenile form of Tyrannosaurus rex, and he argued very eloquently for that position. Then, the discovery of a new specimen set everything afire. In 2001, paleontologists from the Burpee Museum discovered a really nice specimen. This one was called Jane. Jane was a young Tyrannosaur, without doubt. But it had many features that were similar to the described Nanotyrannus. Jane was a beautiful dinosaur with a nearly complete skull and over 50% of the skeleton. The Burpee team celebrated, and initial press releases all strongly suggested that they had found a Nanotyrannus. The paleontologists that had argued for the validity of Nanotyrannus cheered In fact, up until a Tyrannosaur conference at Burpee in 2005, and up until the very last minute, everyone was expecting them to present their specimen and declare Nanotyrannus as being valid. That didn't happen. After they had, everyone had already presented their own papers, they then came out and declared Jane not a Nanotyrannus, but a juvenile T Rex, and further said that Nanotyrannus was most likely invalid. The anti Nanotyrannus camp said, <coughs> but the pro Nanotyrannus camp said, <coughs> they've been fighting ever since. Jump ahead to 2006. A part-time rancher and part-time fossil hunter, Clayton Phipps, along with some of his friends, discovered something even more amazing. This specimen was called the Montana Dueling Dinosaurs, and it consisted of a older Ceratopsian, fully articulated, locked in the mortal combat with a fully articulated young Tyrannosaur. The skull of this dinosaur had a, a very narrow snout with those blade-like, laterally compressed teeth. It had a foramen on the quadratojugal, just like the Cleveland specimen, and Jane. And just like Jane, it had 17 teeth in its dentary. This tyrannosaur was nicknamed Bloody Mary. And when it was studied by Dr. Robert Bacher and Peter Larson, they found the same unique characteristics that set 
the Nano Tyrannus apart from the T Rex. One of the really cool things about this particular specimen is it has a nice articulated arm, and that arm is the same length as a full grown adult Tyrannosaurus Rex, even though the animal is half the size of an adult. The pro Nano Tyrannus camp said, But the Juvie T-Rex camp said, <laughs> They then complained that the specimen was privately collected, not by a public museum or university, and since it was also privately owned, that's bad, could not be studied and did not count. They further claim that until this specimen finds its way into a public museum, we may never, quote, know what it is. The Pro Nano Camp yelled, <laughs> The dueling dinosaurs are still privately held to this day, and thus, the arguing still continues. Horizon's really good for raptor teeth. And Dad over here, Dan, he's dealing with the plant life. He's he's in this really weird zone where we get. I'm not going to call it varves because that would imply we have a definite seasonal component and we could count the count the uh, um, count the uh, years or seasons but um, it, it definitely has a has an interesting interesting geology here that's a little fragment of uh, amber we don't get too great of amber here every once in a while we get a little pea sized grain this is a little speck of amber and there's a lot of plant fossils in here, but they are uh, mostly just a kind of a hash, as you can see here. And again, there's a few little tiny bits and pieces of amber. I've kept a handful for uh, for um, for geology purposes. Uh, I'll do some detailed petrography, or petrology on rather petrology on uh, this uh, this type of rock, and it seems to be fairly consistent layer till it gets to about there and then disappears. Goes this way, fairly consistent layer, pinches out right about over there by Gary. Um, and it also corresponds to a high spot in the floor. So something interesting was going on here. Probably a very slow pooling up of water um, where you're getting fine sand and fine organics being deposited out. Now, right under that layer, we tend to find lots of bones, so be very careful with the chisel as you get lower. Dan and Cade spent a good deal of time clearing some overburden, got a nice little spot, and bam, T Rex. That's what you love to find. T Rex, T Rex. The most awesome carnivore to ever walk the planet. Heather's going to be helping with mapping. We got a big group out here today. Let's see, these folks are from the Netherlands. Yeah. And he's got something cool over there too. Yeah. Team, team. Condition. Uh, condition. Uh, awesome. <laughs> huh? The folks down the way the over there. Terms. Those are. Uh, yeah, it's very yeah. scientific. <laughs> awesome. The folks down there are uh, from uh, Great Britain. And here's Stefan and Amy, and they're originally from Germany. Yes. And you've got part of a Triceratops tooth you're chasing. Amy has a piece of turtle shell. Ooh, she got something else over there too, looks like. I'll come take a look in a little bit. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and map it in its position and show where it's pointing. He's also got another potential little vert fragment or something right there. Very cool, and right where I told you, right? Yep, absolutely. Right below that weird little laminated zone. 
thinly laminate zone. So let's see, we are at the base. I'm gonna call that seven, 787, Heather, or I'm sorry, 788. 788 to the base from station minus five. Okay. Well, that was easy enough. I was just brushing it. And you said it has been glued pretty yep. well, right? Yep. yep. Okay. Very nice. I like to be present when they're all born. <laughs> oh, that is a very nice, and it looks like nano tyrannus. It's a big nano tyrannus. Yeah. That's big for now. So, That's what I was thinking. Um, that'd be a full You're talking a 20, 25 foot long dinosaur here. And uh, it's very laterally compressed, and the serration is kind of worn off, so it's really hard to say. Yeah, well, on this side, I can see it's a very fine serration. So even though it's a big tooth, even though it's a very big tooth, it's got a very fine serration. And I would bet if we put this under a microscope, you're going to see about four serrations per millimeter uh, on, on certainly that anterior side. Uh, we might be able to see a faint little bit right in there on the, uh, I'm sorry, the anterior uh, Four on the posterior side might be able to see some on the uh, anterior side as well. Yeah, I am tired. I'm just speaking. Anyway, so. As far as I'm concerned, Nano Tyrannus has to stay valid at this point. There are certainly enough characteristics that are unique and different about these specimens that set them apart from a full-grown adult Tyrannosaurus rex. And until somebody comes along with a baby T-Rex that looks like a T-Rex, or an adult version of Nanotyrannus that looks like a Nanotyrannus, or even a growth series in a closely related Tyrannosaur genera that matches this level of ontogenetic change. Until one of those things happens, this debate's likely to go on and on and on. So, rather than puff our chests up and start yelling at one another, I would much rather get in the field and dig, dig, dig. We've got to find more specimens. The more specimens we have, the greater the resolution we will have on this question. Until someone can conclusively prove to me that Nanotyrannus is just a juvenile T-Rex, I'm going to consider it valid. You guys say that louder. What, what, what did you find? No, oh, louder because the audio in this sucks. That's right. It took him six hours to get that turtle shell out. He's very proud of that. Woo! You gotta be a great chaser. Yeah, you gotta be a good chaser. Seven weeks straight. Well, it's really four months. Four months straight.
Iron Stone site. So the interesting spot was kind of found by accident a couple years ago, and it's mostly large chunks of ironstone pebbles, including some dinosaur bones, lots of dinosaur bones stuck in between, like this one. This is some sort of a pelvic bone or something. And we are here with a school group. Say hi, Mr. Logan. Hi. with some of the kids looking at some of this weathered debris that's on the surface doing a little surface collecting and unfortunately we got all the kids out here safe and sound but we got that coming at us darn it so weather might be chasing us off soon that wind is fierce and for some reason I don't know what it is Sometimes the kids lose their crackers. Ninja. Ah. Ninja throwing stars. Just kidding. Ah. Not to be confused with dinosaur bones. Okay. Over here, let's see, we have another one of our teachers. She's looking for some, there's a bunch of fragments coming down here. She's looking for some. <laughs> That's all right. Seriously, Doing good. We'll just take a rest here for a minute. Seriously, when I got here, yeah, I I couldn't even walk ten feet without just um, saying that my legs are tired. But now, the now you're strong like bull, right? Yeah. I want to go on that roller coaster. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then in the ride, you can tell us more your story. Yeah. yeah. Boys are good. They like they want to climb the mountain. All right, we're gonna keep moving now. Pay attention, guys. Hold on. All these iron stone pebbles that are coming down were once part of another river channel, a little bit higher. These river channels have occasional bones, so watch for bone fragments as we walk. We're gonna hit one other place that's gonna be a little bit better for service collecting, so we're going over there. But uh, keep your eyes on the ground, and it does get kind of slippery. It does get a little slick, so watch your step. That might be bone right there. Right there. All right, back to single file. And that storm's coming up quick. We better get out of here soon. We're not going to have much time to play today. Watch your step, watch your step. Here we are, this is another site. July and early August continue to be one tour after the next. Over 400 guests came out with us to dig this summer and I'm pretty sure none of them went home empty-handed.
Early August, however, meant that my kids had to go back to school, and that meant that my family, Heather, William, and Stephen, all had to return back to Florida. Serious field work is tough. You have to make sacrifices here and there if you want success, and it takes a lot of time if you want to find skeletons. For us, we wind up spending a couple months apart every year, which is not fun. But I guess our situation at least allows us a couple months together before they have to head back. And say, ribbit. <laughs> <laughs> Ribbit. No, oh, now he's bouncing. <laughs> Ribbit. You are a bouncy little man. It's a couple nights before Heather and the family head back to Florida, so I think I better take my wife on a little date. One of the best places to go in the area for a date is Deadwood, South Dakota. A historic Old West gambling and mining town originally established back in 1874. It's kind of a wild place. Lots of little casinos, lots of nice restaurants. It's got good music, good food, and a whole bunch of other fun things to do. Thou shalt not undercut, unless it's a danger to your guests. Oh, it's moving. Oh, oh, uh-oh. Don't put this on YouTube. Don't try this at home, kid. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Nice. And he still stands. Still standing. Fantastic. All right, I'm going to stop videoing because I think I'm tempting fate. All right. <laughs> All right, go ahead. What'd you find? Well, I'm uh, demonstrating what not to do on the side of an outcrop. Don't do this. <laughs> no falling. The old men should not be climbing up like Spider-Man. But, uh, you know, if I fall. Nice. Um, I uh, just have another big chunk of bone going in right there, salvaging and saving what we can before this wall collapses. Eventually, this whole thing is going to come down, so uh, it's getting undercut. So I'm trying to save whatever I can in this little pocket before beforehand. So. Nice, and you're doing so very skillfully. You are like the tree climbing gecko of paleontology. Yes. I don't know where I'm going with that, but all right. If I was the gecko, I'd be climbing up. up. <laughs> nice. I just got done telling them, don't put your hand where you can't see. Yeah, you're breaking all kinds of rules I'm right now, aren't you? All right, well, nicely done.
All right, so here we are at the Deer's Ears Butte, and we are playing the paleontological version of Where is Waldo, starring Walter Stein. He is on the side of the butte, and if I close in enough, you can just make him out right about, let's see, where is he? Ah, oh, there he is. Kind of smack in the middle. See him wiggling around there like a like a bug on the side of a giant animal. <laughs> oh, I hope he doesn't stand up and pee off the side of the mountain. That would be a really great video. Anyway, so thank you for playing Where's Waldo? The Walter Stein edition. More glue? No more glue. No more glue. No more glue. Water. Your, oh, wait, first of all, hold your hold your blade like a pencil. You're a lefty or a righty? I'm a lefty. Okay. And I have no idea how to, how you should hold your pencil. <laughs> Just like a regular person. I don't we, I don't hold it weird. Closer to the tip. With more oh. control. You have more control if you hold it closer to and instead of having the tip go towards the bone, flip this like that. And you push like this towards like that. You're using that curved part, and you push towards it. Now, when you feel your blade hit something solid, you get nice and even pressure, then brush. Brush, 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 and leave as much sand around that flat, that right side as you can. Find this. <clears throat> and I want to use your tip against that. If you nick it with a tip, it'll fall apart. So, use the, the flat or the curvy part of the blade. Oh my gosh, is that another one? Oh my gosh, is that another one I hear from over, over here? Everett, is that another one? The dog days of summer were behind us. The family was heading back to Florida. And I had Dave and a dog to keep me company. Next week, there's no tours, and I get to go exploring. I can't wait, assuming my arms and legs hold out that long. In case you do something funny, <laughs> it'll work.